that's what we're gonna be working on today. That's what we're gonna check out. Hang on a sec. Right. It's a tune called Midsummer's Night. I got it off that recording, that specific recording. It's a, a, a band called Dervish, who I've referenced before. I think I've even referenced that specific track before, because it's my favorite all-time album opener. I'm gonna play this tune. It's a new tune. It's written by Vincent Broderick. Well, relatively new. Uh, 60s, 70s, I think. Somewhere around there. I'm not sure. Maybe someone can let me know if that's completely wrong. Could very well be. I did a video last week where I specifically said don't learn from modern bands. Don't learn new tunes. Well, to hell with that. We're going to learn a new tune. It's, again, one called Midsummer's Night. It's awesome. Check it out. So that's what we're playing. Again, it's a tune called Midsummer's Night. It's just a really cool tune, and it's a little bit unusual because it starts kind of in A minor, then ends up in G. We'll break down just the basic melody here right off the bat. Hopefully you guys dig this tune as much as I do. So that's the beginning of the first half. I'll just run that again. Second half starts the same. So it's really just the ending that's different. So again. And so I'll run the whole thing just so you get that. <laughs> part is where it kind of changes up, jumps to G. So it starts off with a bit of a pickup. That's the whole first half. This is one of those where it's going to be real important to get those high notes uh, as clean as you can. I'm pretty sure I screwed one up when I was playing through at full speed, so work on those octave jumps and that kind of thing will make it a lot easier. So again, first half of the A part. First half, second half, again starts the same, just like the A part did. All right, so again, very similar. Whole B part. the A part. So you guys know I dig tunes that have lots of options for ornaments. This is certainly no exception. Uh, right off the bat, there's a good spot for a roll, so... And in that spot, that's when I'll actually do a triple roll. So your basic melody... So... 
So because you got three G's there, the basic melody there is. You get those three G's, it's a good spot for it. So carrying on. Regular roll there. Do that kind of finger bounce thing. I do a lot of triplets with this tune. I think I probably played a few of them when I was running through just the basic melody. I tend to use them a fair bit right there as a transition. As you kind of carry around back to the beginning of the A part. Again, basically the same type of thing the second time through. B part, you got a G roll right off the bat. And I do a cut on the beginning just to kind of accent that beat a little. Again, triplet there. Just to jump up to the D. It's, I, I use that all the time. If you guys have watched my stuff, you know I, I use that a lot. That, on those high notes, it's easy to kind of overdo it and make it even more squeaky than it already is. I throw a cut in there just to kind of give it something. Again, a triplet there. And then a roll on the E. Just kind of seems to fit pretty well, I think. And then a cut just to accent the G. You can do kind of a cran there. I think a triplet's a little bit easier and just seems to fit better, but your call. And then again, the triplets to kind of come back around. Hopefully that helps. I uh, hope you guys dig that tune. It's not one you're going to hear very often. Um, so if those, are, if there's any of you out there looking for not just bog standard traditional tunes, you want to kind of branch out, try something cool, something different. This one is, it's neat. Um, not everybody plays it. Um, even players who play a, a million more tunes than I have don't always have a, a something like that because it is fairly obscure. But I think it's pretty cool. If you got nothing else out of this, hit that link below. Check out that Dervish track. It's just awesome. So that's it. See you on the next one. Cheers.